questions. Coach? Hope everybody's doing well. Um, just got done with uh, with practice too. Man, incredible to be out there. Uh, been been what feels like a long two months, and uh, it's been awesome just to get out there and be able to work with these guys. And the attitude, the effort has been unbelievable. Um, been a lot of fun to be around, and, and I mean that wholeheartedly. It has been an absolute blast to get out and and coach ball and be able to see these guys. Uh, really continue to get better um, through the first few days. Like I said, the attitude, the effort has been unbelievable. Uh, really taking to coaching, uh, really embracing the system, embracing how we're doing it, embracing the process of getting better every day. Really fascinating to see growth among some of these guys that have not played a bunch of football here has been really, really fun. Uh, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been an exciting two days getting into the film room after the first day, getting into the film room uh, these next couple of days as we get to practice three and, and get to put some pads on. Uh, that'll be fun to see. That'll be interesting to see how guys react when you add the physical aspect of what we're doing. Uh, these last two days have been a lot of alignment assignment, um, really executing without pads on, which is, which is a, a big first step for us as we continue to build on the system. So uh, really, really happy with where we're at. Really excited with where we're going. Um, I think we got a long way to go, but but I'm really really happy with these first two days, the foundation we've laid so far, and and where we're going with it. So I'll take questions. Questions. We'll start with David Ubbin, and then we'll go to Ben McKee. Uh, Alex, through two days, who who are some guys that have kind of established themselves as guys who you guys can see have, have done their homework and from the mental side of things um, are not making as many mistakes as you'd expect through two days. Yeah, David, I, I don't know about guys maybe that that aren't making mistakes like I'd expect. There's a little bit of a setup question there, but uh, Jabari Small has been really impressive. That's, that's a guy that I think uh, we, we were all excited to see what he can do. Uh, really, that running back group has got some depth in there, some guys that haven't played a bunch. D has really done a good job. Uh, Tyon Evans has done a really good job. I think those guys have really – um, really done a phenomenal job. I think the wideout group, um, Bayless has shown up. Um, Callaway has really shown up. Uh, those guys have been really, really impressive so far these first couple of days. Uh, the O-line group, uh, I, I feel like, has, has some guys in that group that have played and have, have practiced that way. Uh, the tight end group has done a good job. Um, I think they're continuing to learn how they fit um, in the quarterback group. You know, I, I think playing quarterback in a completely new system um, has been really fascinating to see those guys grow from day one to day two. Um, but to answer your question, two guys that maybe have stood out, Jabari has been one for sure. Uh, and probably that O-line group as a whole, um, knowing how the operation works, getting on the right people playing fast. Uh, those two have been really impressive so far. Alex, just with the tight end group, uh, Austin Pope and Jacob Warren signed as pass catching uh, kind of first tight ends, but then the former staff wanted them to bulk up and use them more as, as blockers. What have y'all's conversations been with, with that group in terms of kind of what you want from them in, in a physique? And do you see D Beckwith sticking at running back at six foot five? Yeah, uh, D Beckworth, really fascinating um, body type. Um, we've spent a bunch of time talking about D. Um, I think our, our plan right now is to, to keep him at running back and let him learn a position, let him get comfortable there. Um, I think it's really hard to evaluate guys if you move them around a whole bunch. Um, he's shown some promise. I mentioned him earlier. Um, shown flashes, uh, just so different, right? Like you, you just have to get used to as a coach seeing a different body type there and and seeing a different skill set. And it's our job as coaches to use those skill sets in the right way. Um, when it comes to the tight ends, specifically you had asked about Austin and Jacob. Um, those two guys, 
their body types kind of are what they are. Um, you know, again, in the same breath as, as D, our job as coaches is, is not to say we want you specifically to do this. Our job is to figure out what they do well and put them into positions to be successful. Um, so how they fit will totally depend on how they look here through the next 13 practices and what they're able to do. Uh, they have done a good job of just learning the system and it, it'll be our job as we get into fall camp and, and obviously game planning to, to fit them into spots where they're successful. Um, guys that are really good pass catchers will catch balls. Guys that are really good run blockers or run block. I, I think if you try to fit a square peg in a round hole, sometimes you, you can get yourself in trouble. But with those two guys specifically, really different skill sets, Austin has been super impressive through the first two days. I know he hadn't played football in, what, almost a year and a half. Um, really, really proud of where he is. I think uh, Jacob Warren um, is still, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what he is in terms of how his big body can be used. Uh, but I think both those guys can be really good combination tight ends, can play out in space, can play in the backfield, can play in line. Um, shoot, Princeton Fant falls into that as well. But that's an impressive guy. I've been really, really happy with that room so far. Austin Price and Patrick Brown. Hey, Coach, uh, when you look at, you know, the wide receiver room, you've got some guys there that necessarily hadn't played the position for a whole uh, a whole lot of time. How would you try to break those guys in? And is that something you see in the first couple of days of practice that they're still trying to fill their way through and learn the position? Or do you feel like that maybe they've tried to – they've caught on after having played it a year? Yeah, I think that the, the older guys um, – and I say older guys, guys that have played some, I think – have taken two big steps from, from winter workouts to day one, then to day two. Valus looks like a guy that's played a bunch of football. Um, I think he has to continue to fine tune the fundamentals of the position, release his top of routes, um, just fine tune himself into being a really good every down receiver. Uh, Jalen Hyatt has played a bunch. He looks like a young pup that's, that's really still feeling his way out. In a lot of ways, um, Jimmy Callaway was really impressive through two days. He's a guy that's got a really good skill set, can really run. Um, you know, you got Holiday is is still working his way back. What he's shown in non-contact has been really impressive. Um, you know, we're, we're still kind of digging through that group to see what those guys are. We had a couple guys out, had a couple guys with some COVID things. Uh, I think probably unfair to evaluate those guys totally. Um, but yeah, we are young in a lot of ways there. Um, we really are. You know, we need the Ramel Kings of the world, those guys, those older guys that have been here um, to really step up in a lot of ways. Uh, that's one spot that Coach Burns is, is working, burning midnight oil right now, trying to make sure that those guys are ready to roll. Um, and I think we're kind of leaning on Bayless in a lot of ways because he is the old vet. He's played a ton of football. Um, but that group, I think we'll know better in the middle of spring where, where they are. Uh, but we're pushing like crazy, not so much the older guys, but the younger guys there to step up in a big way. Hey Alex, with, with the quarterbacks, uh, obviously you've got Hendon and, and Brian and, and Harrison there. What, what are some of the things that you're stressing to those guys in, in these first few practices and kind of how have you seen them take some of the retention from what you guys did in terms of the installs before you hit the field, uh, these past several weeks? Yeah, Patrick, I, I think as with any system, just the overall big picture with those guys, um, getting the getting the play call in, communicating it all, um, getting us into the right things as they see different looks, playing really fast, playing decisive. Um, I think that's kind of what's what's being what's separating those guys as we keep moving forward is who can operate within the system at a really high rate. Um, it's all about decision making there, um, you know, in terms of being able to get us in the right play and, and, and execute it at a high clip. I think those guys are all three of those guys are doing a really good job of learning it and then being able to translate it onto the field. I think that's the one position that that you feel like you're, you're probably the hardest on because it all starts there. But all three of those guys are such different skill sets. They're, they're so interesting in what they're good at. And I think as we evolve through spring and as we evolve into fall camp, I think we'll evolve offensively based on what those guys can really do in terms of who ends up being the one and the two and the three and, and, and how we move forward. But those 
what they've done so far to this point has been really impressive. I think the jump from day one to day two has been really impressive just in an operational standpoint. There's still a ton of work there in terms of being able to operate fast and within the system, but they do, they have really made a huge jump from day one to day two, been really impressive. And you mentioned their different skill sets. Can you maybe expound on what each of them kind of brings from, from what you've been able to see? I know it's early, but what, what kind of differences do you see in their games? Yeah, just really, it's, it's probably too early to truly uh, pinpoint that. Um, obviously, all, all of those guys have played in games, which I think is really interesting. You know, Harrison um, has, has some knack to him in terms of he's played, he finished off the year playing. Um, still young, uh, still, still just a sophomore. And, and you can see that at times there's a confidence there. Um, I think the guys really, really rally around him. Um, he's trying to be a really good leader. Coach Heupel's done a really good job of pushing really all three of those guys to be really good leaders. Um, Hendon, you could tell has played a bunch, um, really athletic, um, really good with decision-making. Uh, Maurer is a really, really good athlete um, and, and has a really good arm. Um, for him, it's just continuing to grow within the system and, and continue to learn and grow. I, I think that's probably I keep using, keep saying learn and grow. I think just those guys continuing to take steps. I, I think obviously way too early. Uh, they all, like I said, really unique skill sets. You're trying to find the best guy that can, that can operate within the system and be super efficient in what you do. Um, I think all three of those guys have the ability to do that. So I think it'll just be interesting to see over these next 13 days what what it actually looks like. But I've been really, really happy with where they are. Mike Wilson and Jordan Kramer. Yeah, Alex, if I'm not mistaken, Tyon Evans hasn't played in a game in probably 15 months or so as a JUCO guy. Um, is there been any rust for him? And, and what are the skills that, that make him an exciting running back to have in, in your offense? Yeah, Mike, <clears throat> Tyon hadn't played what I guess you're right, probably 15, 16 months. I actually saw his last game in person. Um, he, he is a really powerful, shorter back, um, high, high end athletic ability um, in terms of, I mean, that guy can backflip standing, standing on two feet, really twitchy, really athletic, really powerful. Um, the rust is probably real in terms of just seeing things. Uh, I honestly have been really impressed with Tyon. Um, really impressive in the pass protection part of it. Really impressive with the ball in his hands. Really high-end ball skills as a pass catcher. Um, does not look like a guy that hadn't played in 15, 15 months, but certainly some rust. Just naturally just taking, taking the ball, holding onto the ball, um, taking the, the handoffs. Um, I think – I think there's a lot of to running back in terms of being able to just be a natural ball carrier. Um, he's been impressive. Um, a little bit of rust, like, like you said, I'm trying to think through the situations the last two days, um, probably just seeing it and being able to, to hit the runs quick, but he's been impressive. Um, I've been really proud of where Tyon is actually at. Hey, Alex, we've talked a lot about just learning this offense. How have you seen the players approach doing just that? And has there been anyone that stood out to you in their kind of quest to grasp what you guys are asking of them on the offense? Yeah, I think it's been it's been fascinating to see the growth, like I said, from from winter workouts to to day one to day two. Uh, we've taken it really slow in terms of how we're putting it in uh, have really tried to give them the big picture in terms of how we operate and really focused more than anything these first two days on that. Um, just the operation of, of how we play with tempo and how we, how we operate in terms of where the ball is, how we're trying to call it, how we're trying to get the ball snapped. Um, so we've kept the installation really, really light uh, so that we can operate really fast and, and gain some confidence early. I think anytime you're putting in a, a new system, it's all about obviously the guys buying into it, the guys being able to operate within it and developing a level of confidence here early in, in spring ball to, to leave like today, for example, leaving and feeling really good at the end of practice with how these first two days went. I think it's super critical. So, 
so that they can leave and have confidence going into putting pads on. And now where there's a physical element that's added to it. Um, I, I think overall, really as an offense, I've been really proud of, of the entire operation. Now, as we add things, um, them being able to comprehend them, see it, correct it. And I think the biggest, the biggest point coach Heifel's tried to make here over the, the first two days, both offense, defense, and special teams is just don't make the same mistake twice. Um, you're good. As long as you mess it up full speed, we're totally good. We'll fix it. And then the next time the expectation is that, that the mistake is corrected. I think within that has been as much as anything from an operation standpoint, from an offensive scheme standpoint, it's been setting a standard for us as coaches, for the guys, and then truly holding them to that standard. Um, I, I think anytime you come in as a new staff, how you start is absolutely critical. Um, but us setting a standard, setting an expectation, how are we going to be elite? Um, and, and obviously you can be, you, you gotta be good before you can be great before you can really le reach a level of, of elite offensive play. Um, but for us, it's not making the same mistake twice. It's living up to the standard. It's executing at the standard that we've set. And that goes with anything that these guys are doing that goes with the off the field things that goes with going to class that, that goes with living right on the weekends that goes with, into everything we're doing. So as much as the football part, the, the other half of their lives, uh, going to class, it's been, it's been setting a standard and holding them to that standard. And I know I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent there, but, but that's been everything that we're doing. Um, it's not just the plays. It's not even really the actual players and how they fit. We'll figure that out. We got some incredible coaches with incredible minds in our room. Um, it, it's just getting them to play extremely hard at an extremely high rate and making really good decisions in everything that they're doing. And that's been what this whole last two months has been about. That's been what these first two days have been about. And, and for the most part, they have done a really good job. We got to get everybody in it and, um, and we'll, we'll keep taking strides to, to reach a new level. Vince Ferrar. Hey, Alex, Vince Ferrar, 99.1, the sports animal here in Knoxville. You obviously, with your offense, you guys talk about it all the time, the tempo and the pace, but it was a much different offense and the personnel to that prior to. You complimented the offensive line earlier, wondering what that adjustment has been like for some of those guys to the pace of play and maybe, you know, who's really risen up in now that higher pace they're being, they're being asked to, uh, to execute. Yeah, Vince, I think it's so different than what they've done, um, what they were used to. Uh, that was complete, completely being honest with you on this. That was my biggest concern going in is, is how will those guys operate within it? Um, you know, my first year, a year ago um, at, in Orlando, they, they were going into year three of the system. So that, that would never cross my mind in terms of those guys being ready. Um, obviously here, that was a concern in terms of those guys being able to just function within the system. i uh, been really proud of how they've, they've handled it. Again, I think it helps that those, there's a handful of guys in there that have played football. So just adjusting their thinking, adjusting how we're doing it. Uh, Glenn has done an incredible job. I, I, I think Glenn is, is, if not the best O-line coach in the country, I, I, you'd have to show me one that is. Uh, the way he teaches it, the way it's installed for those guys the system that he's come up with to, to be able to, to get those guys lined up, hear it, see it, um, and execute it is incredible. Um, that's not to say that they haven't made mistakes, but they have done, I mean, they have stood out in terms of learning it, seeing it, executing it. I think us keeping it simple in terms of what we've installed, Vince, I think has been a huge part of that. But just the way that they've learned it, the way that they rep it, the way that they work, they're kind of in their own little world there for a little while until we come to a team period. And to be honest with you, it, it's been fascinating. Uh, the way Glenn does it with those guys, is absolutely fascinating. And he deserves a ton of credit, him and his guys, what, what they do down there in the corner of the end zone, and then are able to come and, and execute at a high clip. They've been really, really good through these first two days, have not missed a beat whatsoever. Um, in terms of guys there that have been impressive, um, Cade has done a really good job. I've been really pr impressed with him. He really likes to play football. He's fun to watch. Uh, Darnell Wright has been really impressive. Spragans, uh, for a young guy, boy, he plays his tail off. Um, um, 
Mays at center has done a really good job. Man, I, I, I've been impressed with those young guys. We're, we're big, we're strong. I, I've been impressed. Those guys come off the ball and they've been, again, there's no pads on right now, but I can't say enough good things about those guys. Last question really quickly, Brent Hobbs. Coach has a meeting shortly. Yeah, Coach, just curious, aside from the enthusiasm and, and maybe the mental side of things, what have you learned about this offense through two practices that you didn't know uh, when you took to the practice field? Uh, maybe faster or something physically? What, what have you learned about this unit? Yeah, good question, Brent. Uh, no pads on yet. So we'll, we'll find out here next week. Um, that part of it, I'm really excited about it. To be honest with you, I think it's it's – been the first time since we've been here that we've put them into really hard situations um, through these first two days. Um, you know, we talked about when we got here and I don't know that they really believed us or maybe probably looked at us a little bit like we, we got two heads um, and we've continued to talk about fighting through adversity, that adversity is coming. These guys have been through a lot. Uh, I think sometimes we forget what they have actually gone through uh, to get to this point. Um, it, the guys that are here have, have fought through a lot. Um, and it's our job as coaches to, to bottle that up and transform it into something great. Um, I've been just really impressed with how hard they practice, both on offense and defense. These guys are, are trying to take the coaching. These guys are trying to, to live up to the standard that we're setting because we're not bending the standard at which we're, we're going to play and at which we're going to run this program. So for, for the most part, this is the first time as a team that it has been hard, like really hard. The neat thing about this group is they have been through hard, just not since we've been here. So to see them all fight through it, to throw adverse situations at them. It's been fascinating to see them. Uh, but that's probably the one thing that, that through these first two days, as we got into, into the second half of practice and they're a little bit tired and they're a little bit banged up and they're a little bit exhausted and coach maybe is yelling at me and, and maybe coach is mad about something that happened. Forget about it. Play the next play as hard as you can, as long as you can and to the best of your ability. And if we continue to do that and we continue to fight through these adverse situations, we'll be all right. I think continuing to put them into hard situations, us as coaches and seeing how they respond. Cause all we're trying to do is replicate what it's gonna be like when you line up at Neyland in September and you go. So Coach Hype has done a good job of trying to create hard situations, real situations, and then force them to fight through those. But I think that's as we keep moving forward, that's where where once we put pads on, now it's hard and you got equipment on and people are banging against you. Now, what can you do? So for us, it's it's us as coaches setting the standard at what we want them to do, holding them to that standard and then seeing how they react and then coaching that and then setting another standard for them. And obviously you want to have success early, which is why we've kept it relatively simple so that as you continue to go and then you don't have success, you can coach off of that. And that's not cliche coach talk, that's real talk. For, for these guys to continue to fight, I've been really, really impressed. There's a really cool energy about this team, maybe a little bit of a youthful energy. Um, and our job to continue to find the leaders and have them bring the energy. Cause I think, you know, the leadership part is what's gonna continue to carry them through. And, and we need that, that leadership to become player driven here as we go through these next three, uh, 13 practices. Thank you, coach. Thank you guys, I appreciate it, go balls.